you, do you does he sound muffled to you guys? Yes. Yes, he does. Okay. Yeah, much better. We got you now. That was I. I, I didn't do anything, so that's interesting. Um, hopefully, it'll uh, stay in good shape throughout the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the Harry Hines Shared Youth Path Pre-Project Public Meeting. Uh, we're glad to have uh, a lot of folks uh, to listen in and join us today. Um, we're going to have uh, an agenda that's pretty well packed. If we can move to the next slide, please. We do have some housekeeping announcements. Uh, for example, we will be recording this session and it will be made available to all the people who've registered and are online and have questions about it uh, after uh, afterwards. Uh, we uh, have put the audience into listen only mode and we encourage you to, if you wanna interact with us to ask questions, please use the Q and A feature of WebEx and we'll be collecting those and addressing those uh, throughout and particularly at the end of the presentations. Uh, certainly, uh, if you can, we would love for you to introduce yourself uh, via the click uh, chat box feature. And if you could indicate your name and your organization and your uh, contractor status, whether you're a, a a main or a sub, we'd love to, to know that about y'all. But again, we are recording this and it, it will be available for you uh, just shortly after the presentation is over. Next slide. Our agenda is pretty straightforward. Again, uh, want to welcome you. We'll have some remarks from our commissioner of the district, Commissioner Garcia. We'll have a statement from Alberta Blair uh, project overview, and then I think informative insight by our small business enterprise office, TxDOT's DBE office, and then the question and answer as I mentioned before. Next slide. The this is an overview of the overall county with all the districts. Uh, next slide. Commissioner Garcia's district here is shown with the project location. Next slide. This particular area is Omar Navarraz's uh, city council district, and we wanted to represent and, and show you that. So with this, I will turn it over to Commissioner Garcia and to see if she has any comments to start us off with. Thank you so much, Mr. Tigwell. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, uh, for joining us today in this Dallas County Harry Hines pre-project meeting. A 5.2, over $5.2 million project in partnership with the city of Dallas, TxDOT, and the North Central Texas Council of Government. And this project will be led by Dallas County Public Force Department. Um, it's an exciting project, I believe. Uh, it involves new concrete side paths on the east side from West Chapel Extension to Manana Drive and west side of Harry Hines from Community Drive to Manana Drive and has many, many, many parts and elements from hydrant relocations to retaining walls and underground conduits. So you can, I can see that for a lot of people, this will be a very exciting project. So I wanna thank all our partners that make this uh, meeting possible. Of course, I have to start with Dallas County Public Works, our director, Ms. Alberta Blair, which is on the queue and you will hear from her again and all her team. Uh, the director of small business enterprise, Jesse Crawford and his team, uh, representing the purchasing department, Mr. Mario Alvarado. And of course, our partners with the city of Dallas, uh, starting with uh, Honorable Omar Narvaez, which this project is in district four and his district as we just saw. And of course, the city of Dallas team. Muchísimas gracias for being with us today. Thank you all for joining us. And without any further ado, let's get started. Thank you, Commissioner Garcia. Alberta, would you like to 
kick us off with the discussion of our public works department, please. Sure, Jack. Thank you so much. And thank you, Commissioner, for introducing us and, um, and really uh, everything you've done for this area and for, for these particular projects. So, um, with, with that, I want to go ahead and just talk about just what the public works department is all about for Dallas County and our whole vision and mission. And again, our, our vision is to provide uh, uh, definitely be a strong entity within the government and then also for a healthy, com uh, a healthy community, safe and secure and prepared and be, pro uh, be a proactive regional partner. And then to be uh, to do projects that are specific to business and to the residents of Dallas County. Next slide. And again, for public works, our mission is to build transportation projects uh, as mentioned and projects that are about quality quality of life. And then also we are heavily into planning and uh, definitely projects within this region. We've done a lot of projects in this area. Uh, besides uh, doing this project, we've done Denton Drive, North Haven Trail. So we've done a lot of projects within this region and within this area. And then to have a high value added to the region and to the, the things that we do within the area. Next slide. So uh, with that, uh, again, I want to thank the city of Dallas and their partnership and everything that we've been doing. So Jack, with that, I want to go ahead and have you to introduce our project team and so we can talk about the the specifics of the project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alberta. Uh, our project manager and team is uh, Ted Tegini. Uh, under our engineering and construction division. Uh, Ted, would you mind introducing the rest of the team? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Ted Tegini, uh, senior project manager and over the our design section. Uh, we also have our senior designer. Uh, Marcus George, and who will be also uh, presenting uh, a portion of the um, our presentation. And this project was uh, designed or dis designed uh, by our design team. Next, uh, we have several uh, players, as mentioned earlier. Uh, Dallas County is the lead agency for design as well as construction management. And we have TxDOT um, as our partner also who facilitates the reimbursement of the federal funds uh, during construction and as well as oversee uh, or ensure that federal and state guidelines are met uh, uh, during construction as well as uh, design. Uh, we have the North Central Texas um, Council of Governments through whom that we have obtained this federal uh, funding. And so we really appreciate uh, their cooperation on that. Uh, we're also partnering with the city of Dallas, as we'll be talking uh, on uh, a little bit more detail later on, on some items um, uh, that I'll be mentioning later. And our design team is our uh, Dallas County Public Works design team, uh, along with AZB Engineering, who have uh, helped us uh, with surveying, as well as completing our design um, environmental uh, documentation. Next, the project was uh, awarded the transportation alternatives set aside funding for construction as a part of federally funded project in August of 2019. Um, conceptual design uh, began uh, in May of 2021 to 30% effort. And in January of this year, we started uh, working really hard uh, to finalize the plan uh, to 100% effort. Um, in May of uh, 2022, um, our environmental clearance was approved, as well as the final PSNE and bid uh, uh, documentation uh, was submitted for uh, to TxDOT for approval. Next, we're anticipating uh, that the plan, as well as the uh, bid document, will be approved. Uh, uh, we're, we anticipate next week. Uh, sometime in June, and that will give us uh, that will take us into July of next uh, month, uh, which is uh, to obtain the federal uh, letter of authority, which gives us the uh, the ability to advertise the project in August. 
and uh, we anticipate uh, the construction to begin uh, end of 2022. Um, project is located uh, within the city of Dallas, as has been mentioned earlier, uh, an eight foot to 10 foot side path on the east side of Harry Hines from Webb Chapel to Manana Drive, uh, and a seven foot sidewalk from uh, Community uh, Drive to Manana Drive. Next. Uh, this has also been mentioned. Uh, our director, Alberta, had mentioned it. There are several projects that have been completed in this area, North Haven Trail. Um, uh, it's on the upper right corner, uh, Den Drive, uh, which also has a uh, sidewalk and, um, and trail. And uh, as you can see, uh, on, on the third half, on the upper, we have a red line. Uh, that showed the existing seven foot sidewalk from Manana Drive all the way to Royal Lane on both sides of of the um, Harry Hines. And that was constructed in, in uh, I believe, eight to 10 years ago. And on the south side, where we have a Web Chapel extension, we have a five foot sidewalk. So in, the, in between, there is no continuous uh, sidewalk um, uh, or pedestrian facility. Uh, even though there were, there are a few locations um, that will that serve about a block or so, uh, but there's no continuous um, uh, facility, pedestrian facility between those two uh, locations. Next, um, the project is uh, will be constructed within existing right away on the west side. Uh, the seven foot sidewalk is a five inch thick pavement. The on the east side, the eight foot to ten foot uh, shared use path is uh, is a six inch uh, thick pavement. We have multiple driveway reconstructions uh, due to the ADA requirements. Um, we have uh, this is one of the areas we're uh, uh, partnering with the city of Dallas in installing pedestrian traffic signal uh, signals at uh, Community and Manana Drives. Um, we have a, a number of storm drain and fire hydrant relocations and bollards uh, that we'll be also talking about uh, later on. And uh, another uh, item that will also partner with the city of Dallas is the underground three inch underground conduit for the length of the project that will pro is proposed to go underneath the proposed uh, site path. Next. Um, I'll turn this over to Marcus, our senior designer. Thank you, Ted. Uh, the next few slides will show the existing conditions uh, throughout the project. Um, this picture on the left, you can see on the east side of Perry Hines, where the shared youth path uh, begins with plenty of green space for the shared youth path um, and existing sidewalk that will um, need to be removed on the east side. Uh, if you could please go to the next slide. So the, uh, the bottom left picture shows the seven foot um, wide sidewalk uh, begins on the southwest corner at Community Drive. Uh, you can also see the existing sidewalk um, on the east side in various locations that will need to be removed. Uh, the picture on the top right is showing the median under the west northwest highway bridge and the existing island that will um, remain. <clears throat> Next slide, please. On this slide, the most uh, important feature would be the bridge over Joe's Creek that has an existing four foot wide sidewalk on the east and west side. Um, it also has a concrete barrier uh, to protect uh, crossing pedestrians from the traveling vehicles along um, Harry Hines. Um, next slide, please. Uh, to this area on the east side of Harry Hines, you can see in the picture the Harry Hines Boulevard. Uh, the green parkway space and the paved area that is currently used as um, as an access road and parking for the um, adjacent businesses. In this area, as we were going through the design process, in this area was going through the design process. We wanted to um, wanted to avoid taking any of that um, access road, so we tried to keep the shared use path within the width of that green parkway space. Uh, next slide, please. 
<clears throat> on this slide, you can see on the east uh, side, there's plenty of green space for the shared use path. Uh, the pictures are at the end of the project on the east and the west side, and it just shows that we are matching um, an existing seven foot sidewalk on east west side that's, uh, that's north, just north of um, Manana Drive. Next slide, please. And here are some of the typical sections. The first proposed section displays the typical layout throughout the project. Um, on the west side, we have a seven foot wide, five inch thick reinforced concrete sidewalk with green buffer space between the edge of sidewalk and the back of curb. And on the east side, we have a 10 foot wide, six inch thick reinforced concrete shared use path with green buffer space between the edge of the shared use path and back of curb. <clears throat> the second uh, typical section there, we uh, the second typical section is when well, we cross the west northwest highway, we will be utilizing the space um, on the median, the, the space on the median between the face of the column and the back of the curb. Um, that space is limited, so the shared use path will have to be reduced down to eight feet. Um, in this area for us to uh, continue along uh, underneath that bridge. Uh, next slide, please. So these are proposed uh, project layouts in the legend. We are showing the shared use path in the um, orange fill, the sidewalk in the green fill, the, uh, the, the orange lines, the right of way line, and the driveways are the uh, the white uh, fill there, the, the driveways that we designated, um, we believe need to be reconstructed in order to keep the a max 1.5% uh, cross slope across. <clears throat> On the top, we're just pointing to the beginning, the beginning of the shared, uh, the shared use path, just north of Webb Chapel and the beginning of the uh, sidewalk that's just south of Community Drive. Uh, so at the community drive, we will be installing uh, pedestrian signals, ground boxes, conduits, and the barrier-free ADA, ADA ramps. Um, the bottom layout um, at the southeast corner of West Northwest Highway in Harry Hines, uh, we will need a retaining wall. We need to be constructed also um, on the east side of Harry Hines, just north of Willowbrook. Two retaining walls will need to be constructed in order to separate the shared use path and the parking lot to the east of the shared use path. And then underneath the bridge at West Northwest Highway, we're showing um, the way we're using the medians to construct the eight foot shared use path and the seven foot wide sidewalk. And we will also be reconstructing the curb and gutter that is, goes along. Uh, next slide, please. So on top, at uh, Joe's Creek, we'll be tapering the shared use path and sidewalk to four feet in order to match the existing sidewalk on Joe's Creek Bridge as um, no reconstruction work will be done on the bridge uh, for this project. Um, on the east side between Joe's Creek and Freewood, we have a lot, we have a few drop inlets that are located within that, that green space that we wanted to keep the shared use path and those will need to be relocated. Also, curb and gutter that is on the driveway side of the parkway will need to be replaced along with five feet of the adjacent asphalt pavement. You can also see um, in these in this in this layout that there's plenty of um, driveways that will need to be reconstructed, as I said, so that we can keep the uh, we can keep one point at maximum one point five percent cross slope across the driveway. And at the bottom, uh, you can see that there's Plenty of green space as we meander along towards the end of the project at Minana Drive. Um, at Minana, we will be uh, constructing pedestrian signals, ground boxes, uh, conduits, and also the barrier-free ramps as well. Next slide, please. <coughs> so keeping the shared use path within the parkway uh, width has caused a few constraints throughout the project. On the, the picture, the top left shows constraints involving the utility and a light pole where we are reducing the shared use path to eight feet in order to go between those two util utilities. Uh, the bottom right shows an example of the drop inlets that I spoke about 
that will need to be relocated in order so as to keep that shared use path within that uh, parkway space. Next slide, please. So in this picture, we are continuing to utilize that parkway, that parkway space, and here we are faced with the challenges involving the light pole, the fire hydrant, and this parking lot. Uh, in this area, we will be reducing the shared use path again down to eight feet and relocating the fire hydrant. We will also need to build a retaining wall um, to separate the parking lot and the shared use path. Uh, we also need to reconstruct this driveway because it's a uh, to keep that 1.5% cross slope, as I've mentioned. Next slide, please. Uh, this picture is of the median underneath the west Northwest Highway Bridge. We have exactly eight feet between that face of the column and the back of the curb. So that's what I think this is. I believe this is the seven foot side sidewalk. So there's no issue with that. But you can also see some utilities that will need to be removed and. Um, abandoned uh, foundations that will also need to be uh, removed. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this layout displays the shared use path just north of Willowbrook. Willowbrook. Um, this is the area that I previously sh previously shown um, where the retaining wall needs to separate um, the parking lot and the shared use path. So the shared use path will be along the back of curb. And to the east, as I mentioned, um, is a parking lot. So this situation um, occurs in several locations along the shared use path. Uh, in order to protect the pedestrians, we will be installing bollards to prevent pedestrians from, you know, being hit by vehicles that are trying to park or or move throughout um, the parking lot. Next slide, please. And here I will uh, pass it back to Ted to continue. Uh, uh, thank you, Marcus. Um, as, as we mentioned, uh, some of these utility uh, conflicts uh, will be taken care of in July. We've, we've been in contact with our utility partners. Uh, the spectrum uh, pads on the right side, you have in the middle uh, upper picture showing Encore. I believe that there's a guy wire in two folds. The guy wire has been uh, removed, uh, but Encore is working uh, really hard either um, one to remove that extra pole uh, closest to the roadway uh, and and uh, and also relocate that pole potentially. Um, Marcus has already mentioned the one on the left side and we have a, a few uh, fire hydrants also that need to be relocated uh, as a result of these uh, conflicts with the site plan. Next. The current funding uh, is as shown. We have the federal TA set aside funding a, a little bit less than 2.2 million, and that is uh, entirely for construction. It's reduced by uh, the state admin cost. Um, and the contribution for Dallas County is a little bit over $2.8 million. And the city of Dallas contribution of $200,000 uh, is uh, going mostly toward the, uh, the pedestrian signals and the underground uh, conduit. And the, we have currently uh, approved project funding of a little bit over $5.2 million. Next. And the current estimated project cost, we have engineers probable uh, construction cost estimate, including contingency, about 3.69 million. Uh, as the rest of the money uh, going 1.5% going into design, uh, which is our in-house project uh, delivery and consultant fee. This also includes uh, 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 money that would go toward inspection during construction with the total estimated project cost of a little bit over 5.2 million. Next. Uh, the estimated timeline, uh, we're estimating to uh, advertise the projects in August of this year and, uh, and uh, anticipate uh, construction to begin end of uh, 2022. Thank you, Jack, and I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Ted um, and Marcus. Uh, our next speaker is going to be from our purchasing department. 
Mr. Alvarado, uh, would you like to make a few comments, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Mario Alvarado. I'm the assistant director of purchasing, and we're going to give you a little bit of information uh, uh, related to the requirements of uh, the, uh, the bid. So next slide, please. So this is uh, the solicitation process that we'll be using is a, a bid, uh, an IFB. And so in a construction project that exceeds $100,000, we require a bid bond or a bid security in lieu of a bid bond. A bid security is just cashier's check um, in lieu of a bid bond. But if you are going to use a bid bond, um, a bid bond is required to be uh, executed by a surety authorized to do business in Texas. So that's important. And then the amount is um, can't be less than 5% of the total bid price. So if um, the the bid bond will be returned back to the um, to the bidder once the the requirements have been met and those requirements uh, part of those requirements are requiring a performance bond and a payment bond uh, and of course insurance and the performance bond and the payment bond um, have to be 100% of the total project. So that's really, really important. And of course, the performance bond and the payment bonds must be submitted. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, will be uh, submitted 10 days after commissioner's court approval. And one thing that um, I will mention is that uh, the bid security or the bid bond must be submitted uh, with your bid if your bid is being submitted in our copy or if your bid is being submitted electronically, it must be submitted uh, prior to uh, the bid due date. Uh, next slide, please. So in order to access the bid, uh, you must be registered um, as a vendor uh, to do business with Dallas County. And here we're providing some links. Uh, if you're already registered, you can access the, the bid or if you're not registered just yet, um, we're also providing you the, the link to register. And so when you are registering, click on the register for free because there is no fee to do business with the county or access any of our solicitations. So if you're already registered or are registering, it's important to note that we'll be using um, the following NIGP codes. And these are just codes that we use um, to notify vendors that are registered to do business with the county uh, once the solicitation is let. So here we're providing you the uh, the uh, NIGP codes so that when you register, please select those. And if you're already registered, go into your vendor profile, edit your vendor profile, and select these um, NIGP codes to your register or to your vendor profile so that when we do let the solicitation, then you will receive an email notification. And please also check to make sure that your email is correct so that when we do uh, post these uh, this bid, you will be noticed of the solicitation. Next slide, please. So here we're providing some links um, to access uh, the solicitation and um, also instructions on how to submit an electronic bid and how to uh, submit uh, a paper bid. So those are um, instructions that you'll find in those links. And additionally, down at the bottom, you'll find some uh, contact information for uh, assistance. If you need assistance in submitting a bid or registering, you can call the 1-800 number or uh, if you choose to submit a uh, an email, we're providing the email there for you as well. Uh, next slide, please. So once you register, you'll have access to uh, 9,000 agencies through uh, BitSync. That's our solicitation portal. A lot of agencies use that. So not only will you have access to Dallas County uh, solicitations, you'll also have access to other agencies. And the benefit of this is that you can do everything electronically. You don't have to come to uh, to Dallas County or to the records building to submit your solicitation. You can do it um, all electronically. And um, also, it's important to note too that um, 
for any uh, future projects that when you're in the um, selection of the commodity codes, that you select the commodity codes that best represent uh, the business that you provide so that anytime that we put out or any other agency that uses the um, NIGP codes that you get notice of their solicitations. And so um, this is a great system to use, it provides an easily read um, summary of the solicitations of the bid results. Um, and you can also look up uh, solicitations um, by geography or other agency names. Uh, next slide, please. So that concludes uh, the information for um, the some of the requirements for the uh, bidding process, and I'll hand it over back to the narrator. Thank you. Mr. Alvarado, thank you so much for your comments. Uh, we'll turn it over to Jesse Crawford, Director of SBE. Jesse, thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. And as Jack shared, I am the SBE Director for Dallas County. And next slide, please. I wanna share with you uh, a little background on our program as well as our mission and our goals. And so here at the county, we have a commitment to create a level playing field on which small businesses can compete fairly. Our goals include not only utilizing those eligible small businesses, but we also encourage them to uh, collaborate with other small businesses to enhance their collective capacity as well as ensure that they're able to you know, seek and, and win business with those larger projects or large scale projects. Also, we wanna increase the number of competitively awarded contracts within our uh, supply chain here at the county. And then we want to also promote the use of those small businesses throughout. So my team acts as advocates internally through our outreach and in-reach oppor uh, opportunities to ensure that there's contract and subcontracting opportunities out there. And then finally, we want to ensure that there's non-discrimination in the award and administration of our Dallas County contracts, as well as our procurement with and to small business enterprises. Next slide, please. So here uh, on this particular slide, we want to show you the anticipated services that will be incorporated with this, this project. I won't read them all for you, but they were included on our flyer and our outreach at, uh, information that went out. And so, as you can see, it's, it covers a wide spectrum of services, and we're really uh, looking forward to seeing uh, some small businesses as well as disadvantaged businesses participate with the subcontracting there. Next slide, please. And so I just want to conclude my presentation by uh, reemphasizing the fact that we have a joint commitment to the utilization of small and disadvantaged businesses with uh, TxDOT, along with our City of Dallas compadres as well. And also, I want to reemphasize that this is a text dot uh, project specifically with DBE requirements. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Nora Perez. And thank you again for your time. Nora, you might be on mute. I believe you're good now. Okay, good. Well, hello, my name is Nora Perez. I'm the DB coordinator for the Dallas district here at TechStop. Um, next slide, please. I will be going over some of the DBE, TechStop DB programs requirements for the um, this project. So, you know, once again, the firm has to be certified. Um, has a DB through the uh, TUCP directory. We have seven partners, six partners actually, that are in conjunction with us, which is the uh, North Central Texas Regional Certification, more known as NCTRCA, and it's TechStop, City of Austin, South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency, City of Houston, and Corpus Christi, um, the Regional Transportation um, Authority that are in conjunction with our TUCP directory. And um, the firms are majority owners. Personal network must not exceed the 1.32 million dollars, and it has to be a 51% owned and controlled by one or more social, economic, and disadvantaged individuals. 
to order to be classified as a DBE. Next slide, please. So our TxDOT uh, requirements, the firm must complete their DBE uh, commitment agreement form. This project has a 7% DBE go. So um, when the contractors go into the system, they go into the uh, TUCP, which is our directory, which the um, directory can be accessed through the following internet, which is at text.gov, um, the TXDOTCMS, which what we call the diversity management system. And they will do the research and you will find your DBEs in there. So on the first bullet, the DBEs must complete a DBE commitment agreement form and the contractor certifies by signing this agreement that the subcontractor will execute between the prime and the DBE subcontractors. Um, next slide, please. So the compliance tracking process, this is a local let in our local agency, um, local government agency does not use the B2G now system. So we're old school. So we do use the paper copy, which is the commitment agreement forms, and we we will use um, we will monitor the payment reporting through the primes um, and the subcontractors, and of course we have the prompt pay, which is a form that will guarantee that the prime contractor has paid all their subcontractors within uh, ten days, and the prompt pay form needs to be submitted to TechStart by the 15th day of the, uh, of the following month of the payment. So we do um, monitor all of that information to go with it. So um, like I said, this is a 7% DBE go. So make sure our DBEs, y'all are in the TUCP, your NAT codes are being updated. So when the prime contractors do bid this job, they can find you into the system, you have the right NAT codes, and everybody's in the system so they can um, get the bids out there for all our minorities so we can get that participation going on that one. Um, next slide, please. That is all that I have for TechStock. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Nora, and thanks to all the presenters. Uh, great information. As we noted at the, be at the beginning, we had the opportunity for question and answers, and now's that time. I don't know, uh, Lasagna it, Allen from SBE um, is my partner in crime on this. Lasagna, have you seen any questions come forward? No. No, no questions yet, Jack. Okay. Um, uh if anyone want to ask questions, if you see the uh, three dots near the uh, chat feature, you can click on that and, and click on Q&A, and then you're able to uh, type your question in. Uh, but for right now, uh, no questions. We just give them a, maybe a minute and see if they weren't able to find that feature, give them time enough to type the information in there. Well, as oh. we're moving, <laughs> did we get some? Uh, yes. Uh, with this presentation be shared with us? Yes. Uh, you will receive all of the uh, information, the uh, chat information, the presentation, and also a recording of the uh, event. Uh, this one more. Is uh, there contact information? The next question. Uh, when will the IDIQ come out? I believe that's a question for uh, public works and purchasing. We have several categories of IDIQ uh, category um, opportunities in different uh, stages right now. Um, if you have a question specifically about a um, category, whether it's engineering, specialty services, lab services, those sorts of things, please let us know. Uh, you can reach out to me directly and I will try to get you that answer as quickly as possible. Alberta, if you're still online, um, do you have any insight in or response to that you'd like to give? Uh, we actually are working with purchasing right now, currently on, on an IDIQ and that mill has already occurred. Uh, mm -hmm. There will be probably one in, the, in probably next year or so, but right now, 
uh, the one that uh, was currently out, uh, that one we've already received proposals. Anything you want to add to that, Mario? No, ma'am, there's nothing I can add at this point. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, unmute me. Oh, you got unmute. Okay. Uh, is, uh, we have a few other questions. Is there contact information for the presenters? Uh, I will send in information out uh, when you receive the uh, event materials. Uh, one, another question, on the conduit being installed, is this only for electrical or does it include data? Uh, the, uh, the the conduit is um, sorry about that. Um, no, the conduit is uh, just the uh, uh, three inch conduit, and we're working with the city of Dallas and whatever. I think they want to put uh, fiber optic material, uh, so it's really up to the city of Dallas what they want to do with that. And Ted. Uh... Gus, can, uh, can Carly is on the line now? Yeah. Uh, if you have any, any comments you want to make as well, thank you for coming as well. From the city of Dallas. Gus, you may be muted. Uh, Alberta, we do have uh, Gus on the line. We uh, moved him to the uh, panelist area, so he okay. he is unable to uh, unmute if he would like okay. to uh, have a few words at this time. Hi, Gus, are you there? Uh, he's still on mute. Um, what we'll do, we'll come back to him, uh, Alberta, and we'll just continue with the questions. Sure. Um, we have a technical question uh, from the project team. Are the driveways already designed as part of the produced plans? Uh, yes, the ones that we are relocating or adjusting the, <coughs> excuse me, the cross slope. Yeah, they are they're, they're designed and uh, basically maintained, uh, I believe an eight inch thick uh, driveway to, uh, to be in compliance uh, for commercial uh, driveway and uh, yes they are okay the next question uh, are the county's SBE program and requirements being replaced by textiles DBE program requirements for this project the answer is yes another question uh, for the project team a uh, traffic control plan will the CG have have to provide or will the county provide? Well, it's it's a part of the bid uh, project. The uh, contractor will have to provide uh, that. It is uh, also would be shown in in the plan set. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is a, a, a question, <laughs> maybe a comment, but uh, someone wanted us to know. Uh, oh, he said, hey, I wanted to know if you have any opportunities for 18 wheeler truck. Thank you. Uh, that may be for hauling uh, dirt. I'm not for sure. I guess the answer would be it's not anticipated, but it could could arise. Is that a fair answer? Uh, 
I guess the, I guess the question here is it going towards construction activities? And I guess if, if it is, there could be some opportunities. Okay, Zach. And Carly is is now on the line. So, if you have any specific questions for the city of Dallas, Gus, are you there now? Yeah, there he is. Welcome. Can you hear Gus. me? Sorry, sorry. Yes, about that. we can hear you. We can hear you. Welcome. Welcome, Gus. Thank you. Is there any questions from the city of Dallas? There was one question about the conduit. So, Ted, uh, if you want to uh, uh, ask that question on the conduit. Uh, Yes, yes. The question was uh, uh, conduit being installed. Is, is this only for electrical or does it include data? Uh, at this point, it is the uh, fiber optic. Okay. It's, it's just the conduit for the fiber. For... Okay. Uh, okay, we have another question. Um... I guess it may be the city or uh, uh, public works can address it. Will the TCP go through the public works department approval of the city of Dallas or a separate entity? Uh, we've uh, provided the 100% plan, uh, which includes the TCP plan uh, to the city, uh, I believe a, a week or two ago. And we have already received comments on a number of items from the city. So you have to contact either public works uh, department or someone else. So, if I may uh, add that the, uh, the department of public works is the 1 that will be. That has the office for the permitting and the review of the uh, traffic control. Uh, yes. If that is a uh, potential. Uh, more elaborate um, review. That's when they transfer it to the Department of Transportation. Yes, exactly. yes, yes. We do have comments from transportation. Your department, uh, they, they, I think from past meetings, they've told us to send um, our our plans and documents to uh, to Public Works, and they will uh, send it to uh, various departments within the city. Very good. Um, Lasagna, did have we addressed the question regarding the pending applications for certification? No. Um, so the question, my application for MBE and SBE certifications are still under review by the city of Houston. Uh, something popped up on my screen. I can't see the rest of the question. Okay. Can someone with pending applications submit a bid for this project? Uh, yes, you can submit a bid uh, for this uh, project. Uh, but if you're uh, seeking to be SBE certified, um, we have DBE requirements. Oh, yeah, uh, this is a federal, federally funded project. So it's DBE requirements. But as far as uh, SBE participation here at Dallas County, we only accept certifications uh, through uh, three different entities. That's the North Central Texas Regional Certification Agency, the Dallas Fort Worth Minority Supply Development Council, and the Women Business Council Southwest. Very good. Thank you. Um, I don't see any additional questions on my end. Do you see any on your screen? Uh, I got that be easy for you. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that's much better. No, Jack, I think that. Okay, um, they said, hey, would this project need 18 wheelers? And then it says, okay, thank you. Who would I need to speak to? Thank you. And the other window, I'm assuming yeah. that if, it, if a need for 18 wheelers comes up during construction, that would uh, be brought up as a request for services. Lasagna, are they referring to hauling? Like excavation hauling? I assumed, uh, but I just didn't want to say. 
uh, Miss uh, uh, Santiva, are you pertaining to Holland? Could you put your uh, information into the chat? And then while you respond, um, I'll uh, go ahead and address uh, some more questions in the chat room. Uh, this uh, would be for TechStot. Uh, would TechStot pre-qualification be required of the prime contractor? Nora? Yes. Well, for local lit projects, it's up to the uh, city and how y'all want to handle it. If y'all want to handle it with textile pre-qualification to be required or not. So this will be on to y'all, the local lit, and how y'all want to decide. So uh, does Public Works or the city of Dallas want to address that now or? The answer is yes. And that's the city of Rutherford from engineering yes. construction for public works, Dallas County. Okay, the next question is for TxDOT. Will the prime contractor and their subcontractors be required to conform to TxDOT's e-verifier requirement? For our local lit projects, we do not. That's not a requirement. Now, if the locals will decide to have their contractors, the prime and their subs to be e-verified, that would be up to them. But for right now, as for TechStock, no. It would it would be up to the CDs if y'all want to do the e-verify for your prime and your subcontractors. And um, let me go back on that TechStock pre-qualification. So I know Cecilia, she just said yes, that um, this project, all the primes have to be TechStock pre-qualified. So y'all can go into the uh, techstock.gov and um, under business. And then you click on contractors, there will be contractors pre-qualification. And there's two ways you can do a confidential questionnaire. And then there's a bidder questionnaire. So I will put that link in our chat. So um, those primes that are want to bid the job and are not tech stock pre-qualified, you'll have the information there. Okay, and Nora, uh, just to add to that, if you were to send me that link as well. When I send out the materials, I'll make sure that to include that in the uh, overall email to everyone. Uh, we do have one other question. Uh, does Texas WOSB hub certification only relate to this project or will a GC need additional certification? Several others were mentioned. So uh, you would have to be DBE certified um, and once you receive the uh, presentation, you will see the uh, agencies that TechStop will accept as far as your DBE certification. It has to be from one of those six uh, different uh, agency partners. Well, that was a great set of questions. I know that uh, we started with none and then we got a, a bunch. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody's participation. Um, if you do have can, more questions, um, please let us know. Contact information will be in the material that Lasagna sends, mm -hmm. and we'll be happy to answer in the best way we can. Um, uh, before I, I, I hope I didn't pull the trigger on that too soon. Lasagna, was there anything else? No. Okay. Let's go to our closing remarks slide, please. And as uh, Wanted to see if Commissioner Garcia's representative had uh, anything they wanted to add or if Commissioner Garcia is still on the line. Hi, Brooks. Hey, Jack. I see Commissioner Garcia's name here. I'm not sure if she's still with us, though. Um, but. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us tonight on behalf of Commissioner Garcia. And uh, thank you, uh, Alberta and on public work staff, Jack, the great MC as usual. And 
also our partners from uh, TxDOT and um, City of Dallas, as well as our SBE and uh, purchasing the personnel. Um, we're very excited about this project. Um, there are uh, several other projects that uh, we're working on in this area as well uh, that are in the planning stages uh, to um, improve connectivity and uh, walkability in Northwest Dallas and the Bachman area. And uh, so we, again, appreciate your attendance and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you, Brooks. I certainly appreciate it. Um, Alberta, any final words? Thank you, Jack. Um, again, I just wanted, uh, I'm just going to reiterate everything that Brooks, Brooks just mentioned here is that uh, this is a great project. Uh, it's a continuation of the things that we're doing in this region. And we do look forward to um, the opportunity to get this advertised. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Jack. And thank you, thank everyone that's uh, on the line and, and attending. Exactly. I, as we close, thank you for attending this pre-project public meeting. Thanks to all of the staff putting it together. Everybody have a great afternoon. Stay cool. And we look forward to moving forward. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks.